This is a presentation about the four macromolecules of living things. Macro means large. Even though they're still microscopic, they're big compared to elements and compounds and things like that. This is from section 2-3 of your textbook. Let me explain the four major macromolecules that all living things contain. First one we'll focus on is carbohydrates. Uh, everybody knows these as sugars. They are made of monomers, remember mono means one, so these are made of single units called monosaccharides. Monosaccharides get bonded together. If you get two monosaccharides together, it's called a disaccharide. If you get more than two monosaccharides bound together, they're called polysaccharides. A reaction called dehydration synthesis actually allows these two of these monosaccharides to bind together. And the bond that is made between them is a special kind of covalent bond that's called a glycosidic bond. On this picture, we can see a dehydration synthesis reaction occurring. If you look up, up at the top, you see each ring structure is a monosaccharide. If you look at the one on the left where the number one is, that's going to react with the one on the right where the number four is. And if you look and see what happened here, we had an OH of the one with a hydrogen of the other combining to make water. That's not shown here on the picture. But in the bottom picture, if you look, there is just a, a bond there with an O in the middle. That's one of those oxygens from one of those ring compounds up above. Where they hook together, that's the covalent bond called a glycosidic bond. And we also have some water that this picture is showing you in the arrow right in the middle going off to the right. Dehydration synthesis is what this is called. Dehydrate means you lose water. You can see that happening in the middle of the picture. Synthesize means to make. So we've made a bond by losing water. That's what dehydration synthesis means. Uh, carbohydrates typically end in the suffix O-S-E. Sucrose is uh, table sugar. Glucose is our blood sugar. And fructose is the sugar that makes fruits taste so good. What do carbs do for us? Uh, mainly, they store energy. And structurally, they can form different things. The exoskeleton of insects is made of a carbohydrate called chitin. So those are the main functions of carbohydrates. Now we'll move on to proteins. Proteins are a polymer made of monomers called amino acids. Amino acids are bound together by the same reaction the carbs are called dehydration synthesis. We still make a covalent bond, but this time it's called a peptide bond. If you look at this picture here, up top we have an amino acid on the left and an amino acid on the right. In the middle, they have made in red for us the OH and the H that are going to make the water to dehydrate as this bond is synthesized. If you take a look down below, we have a peptide bond. That H and OH have made water, H2O, and that's left the molecule. And if you look down below, we have the carbon from the one on the left bound to the nitrogen on the one on the right. That's a covalent bond called a peptide bond, again formed through dehydration synthesis. Amino acids are put together in this way to form a polymer called a protein. What do proteins do for us? I always think of proteins like the duct tape of a cell. There are so many things that proteins do for our bodies. They can serve as enzymes. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions. They can help certain materials get into our cell and get out of our cells. We'll take a look at that a little bit later when we study cells. They help to form bones. They're main main component of our muscles. They help us to fight disease as they form different antibodies. <clears throat> and those are the things that proteins do for us. Lipids. Lipids are one of these macromolecules that are composed of glycerol and three fatty acid chains. <clears throat> They're bound together through three dehydration synthesis reactions, and each of those forms a special kind of covalent bond, but now it's called an ester bond. If you look here, on the left, we have glycerol. It's written in that green ink. On the right, we have three fatty acid chains. If you look in between the two, each fatty acid chain is going to interact with one part of that glycerol molecule, and it's going to do its own dehydration synthesis reaction to help make this lipid molecule. If you look where it's circled, that OH is going to react with the hydrogen of the green glycerol, and that's how water is going to leave this molecule to form a bond. And as you can tell, we're going to do it three times. So this makes three water molecules as it does three dehydration synthesis reactions with each of those fatty acid chains. Here's, here it's all put together. 
to the left. Now this picture is kind of inverted now. Here our glycerol is on the right and our fatty acid chains are on the left. But if you look, the, the oxygen of each of the, the three oxygens on the glycerol are now bound to each of those fatty acid chains and we've lost three water molecules to do this. So remember, dehydration synthesis and this makes ester bonds. What do lipids do for us? They mainly store energy for cells and for organisms. They can also form waterproof coverings on certain things like plants, leaves. We have oils on our skin that are lipids that help make us a bit waterproof. Um, and I have a picture here of some just different foods that are mainly composed of lipids. These are all high energy foods. All right, the final macromolecule that we're gonna study are called nucleic acids. They are made of monomers called nucleotides. Again, nucleotides hook together by doing dehydration synthesis reactions, and the covalent bond that's formed between two nucleotides is called a phosphodiester bond. So each of these macromolecules, they get put together, they're monomers with dehydration synthesis reactions. When two monomers are put together, we uh, call that a covalent bond that binds them. But each covalent bond gets a different name depending on the macromolecule you're talking about. For, for nucleic acids, it's called a phosphodiester bond. I'm not going to show you the molecular structures here. We will get into that once we study DNA and RNA in much more detail once we get to genetics. But I do need you to know what's on this, this bubble here. I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, the two nucleotides that you need to know about, the two nucleic acids that you need to know about, are DNA. That stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA. That stands for ribonucleic acids. These are both made of nucleotides. And the job of these two for right now, I just need you to know that DNA and RNA, they function to store genetic information. And that would be the blueprint for an organism. So your homework. Watch this presentation again if you need to. The chart that you received on Tuesday, use this PowerPoint use this Prezi to help you to uh, fill in the chart and answer the questions that follow. Uh, the document can also be found on Moodle and Community Portal. And we're going to start working with this information next week. So there you have it. Those are the four macromolecules of cells and obviously then the four macromolecules of life. Um, if you have any questions, just go back and watch this again and use your textbook to help you as well.